playroom? Come here. What is this? Oh. Hey guys, welcome back to the Ken Woven Home. I'm Shara and today we are jumping into my playroom. It's finally done and it feels so good to have everything finalized down here. I've been super excited about this series. I hope that you guys have loved it. You know, we're preparing for life with two kiddos. So it's very relevant over here. I know a lot of you guys have kids or you have grandkids or you have nephews and nieces and I feel like it's just a very applicable thing. So as we're going into today's video, I wanted to kind of share the playroom reveal and then also give you guys a few tangible tips to take away for kind of like some key things you want to include in a playroom and how to go about doing it. I'm going to link everything that I possibly can. A lot of this stuff is new. I just bought it this week. Most of it is from Target or Etsy or I ha also love this one Scandinavian shop. So anyway, I'm going to link what I can so you guys have what you need, but be sure to check that box below. If you have not yet subscribed, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to go over on Instagram and follow at Shara Stevens. We always love seeing all of you over there. Oh, and answer today's question of the day, which is what is your favorite childhood memory? Also, do you like my mama shirt? Hopefully you know it says mama and it's a not reading ama backwards. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the playroom. I'm gonna give you a little tour and then I'm gonna break it down and tell you everything I did to create a lovely playroom for Sawyer. Come follow me. So when you first walk in, I love these little bookcases here. These are so adorable. They're such great quality and they're pretty affordable. I have, oh my gosh, can we all just look at Scout right now? <laughs> Do you think that's your chair? Is that your chair? I think it's Sawyer's chair, but I guess it could be yours for now. He's at school. In this corner, we have this lovely little sensory table, which I'm very excited about some great art. He's got a place he can sit down and play. Hi. And then he has access to all of his toys here. Got a few on the floor. And we walk over on this side. We have some more really fun kind of educational prints. Some more toys and art supplies and books. And then you come over to this side and it's kind of like the little snuggle corner, all of his little stuffed animals. Scout. Excuse me. Quiet on set, please. He has his little tunnel that he loves running through. We have our nice little bike over here in case we decide we wanna start getting fit. Then over here, if you guys remember from Sawyer's birthday party, I have this one year of Sawyer board that I made. It turned out super cute. I'm like, why get rid of it? Let's just have it on display down in the basement. Over here is the kitchen area. So cute. I forced Tyler to figure out how to drill into this concrete wall. All of these walls down here are concrete and brick because we're in the basement. But we got a little shelf up from the dollar section at Target. I put all of his little pots and pans here. He's got his refrigerator with, you know, soy milk, regular milk, gotta have options. And there's a nice machine. So cute. These I will link for you guys. It's by a company called Little Dutch. And look. They can practice cutting Velcro fruits and vegetables. Isn't that genius? And then we make our way to Scout's chair slash Sawyer's chair. And this is a great little spot. We don't watch a ton of TV with Sawyer, but we can if we want. And I love that he has like a little chair to cozy up in. And look what has come back from the dead. I haven't had this thing up for years. You guys remember this? It's been in almost every apartment that you guys have ever seen me do on YouTube. And now it's in this house. Okay, let's have a seat. Let me break down what we did, give you guys some tangible tips to take away from this video, and hopefully it'll help you create your playroom as well. 
Okay, the first tip when it comes to setting up your playroom is to create easy to maintain storage. Storage is like the top thing when it comes to a playroom because it can be chaotic and if it's not easy to clean up, you're not gonna stick with it and it's just gonna become a mess. I love these cube storage containers. I got these at Target. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw when we were putting together the other set, there was a white set we were building and that set was uh, the cheaper option. It was like Target's college line, I think it's called room essentials. Nothing against that line. I love that line for a lot of other things, but for this particular thing, um, each around the room essential outer edge, it's like really thin particle board. And what I love about this, this is their new line, or maybe it's rebranded and it's called Bright Room. And I just love that it's thicker. It just looks a little bit more upscale. It looks cleaner, more substantial, and they have this oak color, which I love. So I'm gonna link these below. You can get them in all kinds of configurations and then you just get the bins individually. I have three different color bins here, so I want to kind of mix it up, but keep it very neutral. When it comes to picking storage bins for your playroom, you need to pick it based on your kid's age, or at least like your oldest kid's age maybe, or maybe you have multiple options. I don't have multiple kids yet, so I'll keep you posted on what we do. But if Sawyer was like six or seven, I probably would have gotten, you know you've seen those bins that have like smaller pull-out drawers and they're like translucent. Those are really great for all the small piece toys, like puzzles or Polly Pockets. Do people use Polly Pockets anymore? Did you used to have Polly Pocket? I used to love Polly Pocket. At this stage, Sawyer's toys are bigger. They're more like this sort of a thing. I need a big bin, a big bin for it. I kind of don't want to see what's inside at this point. What I'd rather do is put a little name tag, which I have ordered, but they did not come in in time for this video. And I'll link the ones that I ordered for you guys. Make it so that it's like common sense, easy to clean up. You can grab all the stuff and throw it in there. It doesn't have to be nicely placed in here. It's just put away, clean, and organized. Uh, the other thing with this particular set, I really wanted Sawyer to be able to reach what was up here and be able to pull it down himself. Um, I had originally, with the white ones, they were all the way up to the window. And it added more storage, but it wasn't as functional and easy to use. So I just think that having it a little bit shorter and then longer just makes it look better and it's more practical. And I have a surface to accessorize on, which is always fun. Okay, I wanna show you guys, not only can you get some great kind of bin accessory storage, but finding cute baskets like this is amazing. So these I actually got from Zara. They're kind of mixed all over. They come in three sizes. I just feel like this adds a lot of personality. But this is a fun bin, because I'm a fun mom, you know? So I'm gonna link these below, because I have a feeling you guys are gonna wanna know about these, because they're really cute. Okay, so the second great idea is to keep some of the favorite toys on display. So use them to decorate your playroom with. And the key is to put these things out so they can play with them, but you also simplify it a little bit and you put some of their other favorites or other toys, maybe they're not really into them anymore because they've just seen them so much. You put those in these bins, so they don't see them, and the ones they do see, they'll grab and they'll play with. Now the hope is this keeps it visually very minimal, like I recommend only doing one toy per cubby, keeping it really clean. I mean, you could do like a grouping down here when it's, you know, little dinosaurs. It kind of helps them to focus in on the toys that they can play with, and then you just have your other toys on rotation. So every few weeks, I'll take these toys out, I'll put new ones in those cubbies, and these ones will go in the bins, and he feels like he has new toys. And you don't really need to buy new toys, you just keep switching them out every few weeks. Win-win for everybody, and it keeps it visually very minimal looking and easy on the eye. Okay, one thing I do wanna note, I know I've talked about them before, and originally they, it was like a sponsored thing, but I, this is not sponsored right now, just so you know. Love Every, I think is the best thing that you can get for your kid. It's the best gift you can give somebody that's pregnant. They provide the best quality, and I think just like developmentally really engaging toys that are just like perfect for their age and actually engage them. Like Sawyer loves this. This looks like nothing to me. But when you have a baby that's developmentally learning how to take something out, line it up, put it back in. They have so much pride and joy on something as simple as that, and it looks really pretty, and it's not like an obnoxious thing. They do have color, don't worry, for those of you that are worried Sawyer's gonna be colorblind. They will send it to you every few months. It's like a subscription, you can get new toys, and so that also will help with the renewal of other old toys. Putting the old in the bins and putting the new ones you get out every three months into the little cubby holders. Win-win. Third tip, 
have a really fun activity or sensory table that comes with chairs or stools or something so your little one can either stand and play or draw or sit at the table and practice getting on a chair, getting off a chair. I am so excited about this table. It just came in. And what I love about it is it's a chalkboard, a regular drawing table, and a sensory table all in one. So in these sensory bins, you can put anything from sand to dried rice or dried beans. You can get these little shovels so they can scoop and pour into containers. They can feel the textures. You could just put water in here. And I just think it's a really great way for kids to be able to get, kind of get messy, have fun, explore. And because it can be messy, we have carpet down here in the basement. I would recommend getting some sort of easy to clean up play mat underneath. This is a, it looks like a rug, but it is actually one of those foam core mats. Do you see this? You see this foam core mat? It looks like a rug, but it is not. So this is from a company called Little Nomad, and I'll link it below. What I love about it is they come in squares, like the, how these mats usually do, and you can add to them and make them whatever size or whatever shape you want and they're really easy to wipe down and to clean. I haven't filled these with the beans yet because we're right at the edge of like, are you gonna eat it, are you not? But I feel like here in a few weeks, he can be trusted to be able to play with some of these things. But look how cute. He can have tea with the queen. Okay, number four, decorate with educational posters as your art. So I love these posters. I found them on Etsy. I will link the Etsy shop. And then I just took them to like an Office Depot or FedEx print or whatever and had them printed out in different sizes. I love like the calming techniques, listen to music, stretch, ask for a hug, so cute. And then months of the year, I love this little like repetitive mantra. I'm kind, I'm brave, I'm honest, I'm helpful. I just think it's so great. Obviously he can't read this stuff now, but as he grows and learns, he'll be able to read it. I can read it and repeat it to him. And then Oklahoma has some crazy weather. So I thought it was very, uh, you know, applicable. We get all of these things, so we'll be sure to point them all out, I'm sure, within a month's time. <laughs> it snows and then it's 80 degrees three days later. It is crazy here. One of you actually made this for Sawyer, which was so sweet of you. I don't remember who. You actually signed it on the back, so I need to look that up. But hopefully when the new baby is here, we'll get another one and we can put it right next to it on the other side. But for now, I just have like a random art print. But I love this. It's the time that he was born, how big he was, and his little name. Okay, and then on this side, I made sure to blow these up extra big. This was like 24 by 36 or something. But these are just posters that I had printed. And I just love, we have our colors, we have our feeling words, our alphabet, and our shapes. All things that are applicable to him right now. I just think if you can find these educational posters that are in your color palette, that are like aesthetically pleasing, it just brings life to your playroom and it also is something they can learn with, which I think is kind of a win-win and kind of cute. Okay, last but not least, decorate with some fake plants. I actually got these in the dollar or three dollar section at Target. Fake plants are great. You're adding some greenery vibes in here. It's safer because they can't eat it and they can't get into the dirt and eat the soil. And very easy to maintain. They're not gonna die on you. You don't have to remember to water them. And they just add that like lively touch to the space and you can throw them around and they're not gonna make a mess. Win-win. Okay you guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful and inspiring. Go over to Instagram, it's at Shara Stevens. Uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff over there. You get to see the day-to-day -day life, lots of Sawyer, lots of Scout. And we have a lot of projects going on right now. I'm doing an Airbnb. I haven't even talked about this on here. I'm doing an Airbnb with my neighbor. It's a huge project um, and it's coming to like the install phase here in a few weeks. Tyler and I just bought a second house. It's gonna be an Airbnb as well. I will definitely be showing you guys progression. It is a huge fixer upper and it's going to be a huge project. So if you want to see behind the scenes, I post like live kind of tours of that on Instagram and then we'll definitely be doing a video here on YouTube. And then we're definitely going to be doing a lot of videos on the design sessions, kind of deep dive into that project. If you're looking for some additional interior design help, you know, here on YouTube, we show you kind of the highlight reel. On the design sessions, we get into the nitty gritty and we really do a deep dive into those topics. So if you're somebody that is a home interior design enthusiast or you need extra help, that is an amazing resource and we'd love to see you guys join the design sessions and hang out with us over there. Speaking of the design sessions, most of you know this by now, but if you don't know, for one lucky winner on the design sessions to enter to win $25,000 cash for a room makeover of your choice. 
It is 100% worth it. If you are a member of the Design Sessions, you've already been added and entered into win. Every month that you are a member of the Design Sessions between now and December, you, you get a, an extra entry. And if you're not yet a member, you can go over and join. I will put a link in the description. You guys can check it out. So many people have um, just had tremendous results and just help with making their homes beautiful. It's just like such a great interior design resource and just really beautifully done and kind of our, our little baby. So if you guys are looking for more content about interior design, help with your homes, be sure to check out the design sessions. Okay, you guys, I love you much. Um, I will also link to the playlist for this series if you missed any of those videos. Love you, I will see you next time. Mwah. Thanks for watching. I am kind, I am brave, Doggy. I am helpful, Doggy.